You're not going to go into the light without guidance or help unless you ask for help. Okay, we are here with Kevin Jeffers. He is an artist, he is a soul traveler, he is a healer, and he helps people reach the other side. Hi, Kevin, how are you? How you doing, AJ? It's great seeing you. Uh, I want to know how you have been helping people cross over. And also, I, I want to talk about your book, The Pattern. When did you discover that you could uh, travel to the other side, help people cross over, and when did you have those first meetings with, uh, let's call it the afterlife or the spiritual world? I've been asked many times, how do I do these things? And my answer is simple, I was born that way. The experience began to crystallize for me when I was in my 30s. And it was a very uh, distressing experience and I let it go for a, a number of years and then I picked it up again. And the result is, is that uh, I'm now committed to the process of soul retrieval. Is this something that happens to you spontaneously? Uh, how do you go about these things? Do these spirits contact you? My number one access to this event is my nightly meditation it occurs about three or four in the morning. And I go out, I shift my consciousness out to this to this outer band of energy that wraps around the earth and where souls tend to get trapped if they don't understand how to move into the light. Would that be called the astral world? AJ, I don't know what it's called. I just know that I go there and people that have passed are there and they're confused or angry or had some mental disabilities or died in a way that was not compatible to a smooth transition. Well, I think most people fear death. That's been my experience. Most people just make the transition from death to spiritual life very smoothly. They have family that comes and gets them. They have relatives. It's just people are primed to go to the light. What I address is that small percentage that are stuck here as an example an older person a much older person who's passed through dementia alzheimer's when they pass they don't know where they are it's more like their death is more like their life they just don't understand it so you're not going to go into the light without guidance or help unless you ask for help People that have passed through through drug or chemical addictions, they generally pass. They don't know where they are. They can't tell the difference between the dream of the drug or the or the dream of the next life. What do I do next? They don't know. Violence tends to chop off that experience of the light because it creates confusion. It creates lack of understanding. Uh, you, the cognitive ability is, is shuttered for a period of time. The focus of who to retrieve is the guidance of my guides, my spiritual guides. They have, they have asked me to cooperate in this retrieval process for an individual or a group of people. And then I know where to go and what to do. So for me, it's simple. I just follow the guideposts. It's like traffic cops pointing their hand out. Go that way, Kevin. That one's next. I'm not about to make judgments about what to do or who to do or who to do it with. I much prefer to have guidance and who's ready to transist from the confusion of the life energy system into the light. So how do you actually take uh, help them? You take them by the hand and you lead them to the light or you pray or what? It's really simple. I, I, I put my hand out and I invite them to go into the light. And sometimes there is a lack of comprehension of what the light is or resistance, any number of things. So I say, then I become persuasive. It's kind of like a car salesman. Your family's waiting for you. Your mother has passed. She wants, she wants to see you. And it's not like a higher philosophical achievement. It's just, personal. 
everyone has a mom, everyone has a dad, and even if there's a bad relationship, they have a, a substitute mentor or someone that they that has guided them in their life, everyone. And if you're available and ready to, to stop the confusion of death, that's available to you. So we talk about that. Sometimes it's like talking them through their death experience, releasing it, and it's like a, the shrouds come off their eyes. Do you actually get to know their story, their names, or is that something that is not mentioned? No, I know their name, their age, where they came from, and how they died. How do you learn that? They tell me. There's an energy You're... relationship between you and the person who passed. Okay, so, but you actually have a conversation? Yes. Well, it's not talking. I'm not like, my lips are not moving. Okay. It's a consciousness to consciousness communication. And do you see those people as uh, light beings of light or as shadows or how do you see those spirits? Well, generally they're dark. Generally they're they're covered with confusion and so it's like being wrapped in cotton candy or wrapped in a cloth. And you say you find them in this space that is surrounding Earth. Mm -hmm. And AJ, there are millions of these people that are stuck in this energy band around the earth. People that have died and don't know where to go. People that were in, in war, as an example, or in the Ukraine now, people getting blown up. You did some we're work in up. Ukraine, right? Yes. Can yes. you talk about that? I'll give you one experience. I was directed to a pile of rubble in a city outside of Kiev. Excuse me if that's not saying it right. And I looked at it. And there was an older lady who was down under the rubble, but she'd been blown up. Now I'm thinking, how the heck do you retrieve a blown up person, a blown up soul? And, but you could see the particles or the elements of her soul swirling around in this one location with her identification within those energy, pieces of energy. So this, part, this is the part that gets really strange. I couldn't hold her, I couldn't touch her, I couldn't pull her out because she had been particleized by a very powerful missile. So I said, I figure, how do I do this? Well, then I got a little light clicked in my head. Go back one day. Go back in time one, one day. Which, when you travel, you can do that stuff forwards and backwards, it doesn't matter. So I went back a day and I saw her in, a, in her state of being where she was okay. She was alive, she was breathing, she was all right. And then I went to her energy body and I touched her energy body to get a, it's like an energy identification. We all carry them. We're easily identified to, to spiritual travelers. And I connected with her and everything was fine. She's having a great time. You know, she's just out there, she's the, a grandmother, a mother who has children. She was out buying something. And the, I, the, the details weren't really all that interesting. So then I went forward again to present reality. And I could identify her energy, what I call energy tags, and pull them out and start to bring them together so she could leave. Think of it this way, AJ, you get blown up. I mean. How much do you understand what's going on? I always thought that the physical body could be blown up, but the spirit would remain in a single unity. Well, I say good luck on that. One. Well, I have no idea. I don't have the power to verify what I'm saying. Well, let me interject a thought for you. Sir, you have the power. You you have, have that ability. You could move into those states. So don't say you don't have it. You just don't remember it. Does your book show uh, people how to uh, do this? No. Do you teach others how to do this? Family and friends. What about the rest of the 8 billion people on this world? Do they have any way of learning this on their own? Or are you the person who's going to bring this knowledge to them or what? I think that's a little, uh, that's a higher elevation than I would own up to. I do what I can do with people I know. 
Okay, so what about people who don't know you? For example, me or me, the, the viewers that are watching this, are, do they have any hope of uh, verifying what you're saying or that, or turning it into something positive that you can apply? How can I, I apply what I just learned in my life to make it better? My answer is simple. Most people don't care. An absolute intent to experience the light. These answers will be provided to you. Do you believe in God? Absolutely. I just don't call her God. Meeting Guy was the most frightening experience I ever had in my life. Oh yes? Can you tell us about it? The creator of consciousness on the planet Earth and watching every form of consciousness at all times with her finger on all life because she created all life in the physical form. You have to be a very different breed of consciousness. I don't know if she's a god, goddess, an angel, but she guides the affairs of all consciousness. She allows them to reach out to the pattern, my point of view, to learn how to move into the next state of consciousness. Well, I went to where Guy is. She's right down in the air. She's, she's, that's her hangout, at least in this form of reality. And it was, it was frightening. It was like meeting a force of nature an energy form I had no experience with. So I was kind of happy to pay my respects. Definitely got down on a knee, just believe me. Every once in a while, you run across something where a little knee work is, is essential. Yeah. And I was so happy to get out of there in one piece. You also mentioned in your book that uh, this reality or what we know as reality is actually an infinite pattern. How would you define the pattern? Well, the actual experience of the pattern was a number of years ago, and it was that I was meditating one of those days, and and I was starting to go into that place where I'm able to go out. But then something grabbed me. It was a very strange experience. It was like being yanked out of my body and being pulled to a someplace, a location. And I saw for the first time in detail what I called the pattern. It's a grid overlay, blue and white lights. And it was like projected on a screen. I could see it. I could see its location and relationship to everything else, which is essentially the underlying pattern of what we call our universe. I thought that was interesting. It was like going to a movie. So I just kind of sit back and said, okay, something's up. And then I was pulled again closer and more into the pattern. And the closer I got, the more emotionally the experience became. And as I got closer and closer, and I was getting extraordinarily uncomfortable with this, I could feel the energy and the data being transmitted out from the pattern to life forms, to consciousness, various forms of consciousness, not just people and see that there's a guiding intelligence in the universe that set up this pattern as our mentor, guide, um, traffic director, as we move through, as we move through consciousness from a primary state into a more advanced um, mental state. So that was the experience. And I couldn't talk about it and not because I was reluctant, which I was reluctant a little bit, but the emotion of going through the pattern, going to the pattern was so powerful that I, could, I couldn't even articulate it. What I do is go through a process of relaxation, loosening, and I found many, many years ago that I could project out my consciousness, which is actually just a small part of who I am here, sending it out to um, essentially experience and collect data and, and, and have different kinds of uh, uh, goals and objectives. I know you don't like to use common terms, but that sounds like astral projection or out-of-body experience. I've had out-of-body experience. That's a very visceral experience. That's where you feel the entirety of your energy body okay. going out, going out and then going someplace. Um, 
What I'm talking about is consciousness, the who you are moving out to a location. And it's, it's different than out-of-body experience because it's not as visceral. It's not as when you pass through a wall in an OBE, you can feel the wall. You go through a tree, you can feel the tree. But with the consciousness projection, it's like pure energy moving out. And you don't have that tactile experience of going through a wall. You just go out. And you have in mind, you've intended your destination. And intention is critical in shifting consciousness is without direction, you don't go anywhere or you go someplace else. Um, intention is, is critical for the experience of consciousness shift. Can you describe one of the most profound experiences you've had with shifting consciousness? Good question, AJ. I find they're all profound. I, I know what you're asking, you know, like narrow it into the one that stands out the most. Well, I mean, the one that influenced your understanding of reality the most. The one example I have is more mundane. Um, a friend of mine said, would you come and visit me? Kind of like tongue in cheek, you know, I really don't believe this. I think it's kind of weird. So I went to their house and I memorized all of the furniture, the color of the furniture, the layout, the, the rugs. And then I went back to them the next day and I gave them a phone call and I said, okay, this is what I experienced. And there was a little bit of a shock because that's exactly the way their house looked. And I'd never been there before. I had no idea. And I've done that in a couple of cases where I've been requested to do something and I seek verification of my experience with that person the next day to know that I'm not making something up. Or the degree of accuracy. Is it 70% accurate? Is it 80% accurate? Those are all important things to me because when you're out, um, it's not like being back here. And I don't want the two confused. I want to have it be a, a smooth, continuous experience a smooth, continuous process of moving out and moving back. So I always verify the data. And I won't talk about anything that I experience that has not been verified. I mean, I'll think it, I'll live it, I'll taste it, I'll feel it. But it needs to be verified to be authentic for me. If it's not verified, for all I know, it's my imagination or my head. I ate some bad food. Have you met any uh, other people or have you read about other people who have had similar experiences and could define this uh, pattern that you saw as something that you could actually find uh, when you go out, leave your body? Well, a lady that I'd never met before who is a pastor, the book is referred to her. So she buys the book. She's an author. She knows, she knows about books and she started reading it and she saw the pattern. Now I was shocked because that's the first time a person in this reality has verified my experience. And she tells me that periodically the experience of the pattern is updated to allow this constant flow of information to enhance her experience of life. As you live and the longer you live, you wonder what the heck you're doing here. And you're not really getting the answers that satisfy you. What do you do? Well, you can become frustrated. You become agnostic. I mean, there are a lot of options to do to do nothing because you can't get an answer. So I'm suggesting that becoming aware of the pattern provides access to information that you need to move forward in con your own consciousness. How can you achieve this? Well, it, it's through, once again, intention. Is there a practice that we can adopt to experience that pattern? Well, let, look at it from this point of view. And this is what I do myself. When I sit down and I get, when I'm sitting down in my meditation chair and I'm ready to go out, I create an, an a energized intention of where I want to go and what I want to experience. 
energized intention is very powerful. Intention is the basis of creation for everything. Intention powers us through life and moves us towards the direction that we choose. So I create an intention, I energize the intention, and I send the intention out. And then it links to me somehow. I don't know the mechanics of this. And I go in the direction of the intention. It's kind of like uh, one of those school crossing guards. You know, they'll point. They'll, you know, everything is good here. Nothing is, don't turn, stop. Oh, now you can go. But it's providing direction. The traffic cop at the local corner, and I'm from Chicago. There's a lot of traffic cops. They will point where you need to go. There's an emergency. They will point where you need to go. Otherwise, you would go to a place that you don't really need to go or should go. So the intention, the energized intention, when sent out, when powered, becomes a, a critical component of you achieving what you want. So based on what you say, um, how do you explain, for example, heavenly near-death experiences? That experience in which uh, the person who almost dies or who temporarily dies meets either a god or a, a, a celestial figure like Jesus or Buddha. And how do you explain those phenomena? I think they're just a conceptualization of the experience of, of being in contact directly with spirit. Where so, does the pattern fit in? Well, the pattern is just the underlying um, source of inspiration and guidance in sparking your intelligence and your to and your consciousness to go to the next level of awareness of being okay but when people reach for example uh the, these when they have these uh celestial uh, near-death experiences and they go to that place is that place a fabrication of the pattern is that created by the pattern or is that the pattern no it's not the pattern it's just something that has been created to receive souls that have passed, that have died. Created by whom? Them, you can call them God. I don't care what you call them. I call them the originators because they're the origi originators of the galaxy. So let's go back to your question about where do you go? You go to the place where you transition fully from the physical to the spiritual. And that's the portal of light. In the old days, when I experienced this, I just saw a little portal. It was kind of like a starship, a portal. You know, you go to the portal, you go to someplace else. Now they have tunnels and they have lights and steps and people have really elaborated in the conceptualization of the experience of going into the portal. When you go into the portal, there's like a little line, a little demarcation. You go past that line, you're not coming back. If you stay on the this side of the line, well, you're still at choice. And within that time where you're at choice, if you're fortunate, you will get guidance, you'll get thoughts, you'll have, you'll get uh, ideas about how you've lived your life and you will have choice. You can choose to go forward and move on in your spiritual experience, soul experience, or you can choose to go back. I think a, a commonality or common denominator in the, NDEs that, that you read about is that there was choice. Everyone I read about, someone is given a choice a, to return or to go to go on. So at that at that demarcation line, you're faced with choice. Do you want to go? You want to stay? And that choice directs the next portion of your life cycle experience. Is that choice given to us by the pattern? And who are these beings of light that people see? We have a couple of questions wrapped into one. And I would say, number one, in my experience, the pattern is simply a guide to higher consciousness. Is guiding us. Now, question number two, who are these beings? Well, think of it this way. Eventually, you don't need to be here anymore. And you pass on. And you don't have to come back at all because you've completed your karmic cycle or what you need to learn, what do you do? Well, maybe you look back over your shoulder and you see that humanity needs assistance. Humanity needs guidance. So these souls, and now I call them spirits because they're truly in an energetic state, 
provide the guidance. They provide the direction. They provide some inter intervention in your life. It's just nothing more than who we are becoming who we can be. Do you think this? Uh, we are going through like a, a, an age of spiritual awakening. Is there or is there not a, a spiritual revolution? Well, I would say, and I'd split this answer a little bit. I've traveled all over the world for, I don't know, 40 years now. I've been practically everywhere. And when you go to the Asian countries, they get it. They don't worry about these things. because they, It's all a natural part of life and integration in the spirit. Tibetans, as an example, are taught from when they're children children how to die, how to pass through the bardo, how to pass through the illusions into true spirit. They've got it handled. They know it. There are teachings throughout the history of, example, China, Tibet, and so on, about spiritual life. There, there's no spiritual revolution in Asia. They get it. Now, you move over to the Western culture, and we've been bogged down in churches religions, beliefs, rights and wrongs. And yes, people in Western cultures are experiencing a revolution of thinking because they're including spirit in their life. But it's for that. Asia, they get it. Westerners don't get it. So I would answer your question. It's, it's like, where are you looking, AJ? Are you looking east? Are you looking west? Are you looking at your feet? You need to understand where you are to understand why you're experiencing what you're experiencing. Right. I was referring to the West. But okay. your answer is, good, is, I can understand what you mean. So what made you write the pattern? Was there a specific moment or, or experience that made you decide to share your experience and insight? Well, I wrote it in my early 30s, which was quite a while ago. And... I started the writing because I just felt this, this creative impulse to start talking about these things I've experienced. And then I felt the, the push by my guys. Yeah, yeah, Kevin, write it. Cool, write it. But it was not like finished in, in two, three months, six months, a year. It took 30 years to finish the darn thing. And the original script, manuscript, is twice as long as the book. So I had to go through the manuscript and pull out everything that was not conducive to an, an understanding and appreciation of the pattern. So I removed religions. I, re I removed religious figures I've encountered. I religious weird stuff. I religious my, my earlier parochial attitudes about what life is and, and what people are. So I combed all of that out. So that there was a, a clear, defined experience of what I went through. And please keep this in mind, AJ. This is my experience. I didn't write it with consensus of the group. I didn't seek I didn't seek validation. This is my experience. I experienced it. I wrote about it. You just mentioned that you met uh, several religious figures that you decided not to mention in your book. But I think it's time you should mention it right now. You know? now I knew you were going to say, as soon as I open my mouth, I'm going to say, man, AJ is going to jump all over that. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. Limited versions. Disclaimer. Limited version. Um, when I was in China one time, this must have been about 20, 25 years ago, I was laying in bed after a long day of travel, and Buddha showed up or what I thought was Buddha. And it was just a, a beautiful golden statue that was animated, you know, in the, in the traditional lotus posture, just projecting this in, incredible amount of love. Now, as a Western guy, I was not used to that level of love because it was non-judgmental. It was purely spiritual, but it was like encouraging me. It was, I got this message in my head because, you know, statues don't talk that, okay, you're doing good. Continue the journey. Keep going. And you have my love. I couldn't stop thinking about this for the longest time because I said, wow, you know, I, I expected Aunt Mimi and Uncle Bill to stop by. 
but to have the representation of higher consciousness come through is shocking to me. Is what well, now it changed my point of view again, which I think that was the point of the experience. Kevin, you don't think this, you think that. Why why do you think near-death experiences are so different? Because they're real. There's no imagination, there's no no higher self, no total self. It's just you leaving your body, going to the light, because you died. When you die, when you've died, you don't have to hang on to anything. But let me circle back to the this conversation that before you spoke, which is the higher the higher frequency entities like angels, they don't like coming here. Because the earth is is operating at such a low, low frequency. It's like putting your toe in boiling water. Who wants to do that? So they create representations, which you hit the nail on the head in my experience, of the, of themselves. Or you see that energy, that, that purity of spirit, and it's a little too much, so you cloak it in acceptable religious figures. Now, I'm not excluding the real deal, because the real deal has occurred. It's been documented in history. But I'm very sure that people that experience religious individuals are doing nothing more than forming into shape their conceptualization of what an angel looks like, what spirit looks like, and so on. Now, there are spirits on the earth, but they're more earth spirits. They're not linked to the higher frequency individuals. They're just, you know, there are demons and devils and things that you just really don't want to contemplate too much. That's real. And they're here. And they don't care about us unless they want an occasional snack. Well, I guess I will need to finish reading the pattern. I started reading it, but I have to continue. And the people who are watching this video should also read it. Okay, so uh, how can people contact you uh, or find out some more information? What is your uh, website? Email is info at thepattern.pub. Do you offer any kind any kind of a service to people uh, who need help in, in any way, or what do you do? I don't do anything. I write a book and I talk and I do these things, and I have no interest in the money part. I'm okay with money. So if I do a healing, no charge. If I do a reading, no charge. I'm just not interested in charging. This is. This is a gift. This is my repayment to the universe for my gift. The webpage is www.thepattern.pub. And it gives a brief overview of the, the book, The Pattern. Facebook is the pattern dot Jeffers. That will get you there. Jeffers being my last name. And Amazon is just simply look for the pattern. Kevin Jeffers. Well, it was nice uh, having you here, Kevin. And I hope we can talk again in the future. Uh, I think you mentioned a lot of interesting things. So I'm going to be one of the people who are going to watch this video more than once. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I have a new book that I'm supposed to write. Oh, yes? It's called, it's called Soul Retrieval. Okay, supposed to write by whom? I mean, who is, are you, someone, did someone tell I, you I you should write? write? I'm going to write it and my editor is going to crack the whip. I mean, it's just really that simple. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, I guess I'll see you next time. Good luck and God bless you. It was a pleasure. Thank you.